Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. In covering software vendors' efforts to expand the use of simulation, I lately come across a promising approach, something I call appification. In other words, delivering simulation not as a general purpose software program, but as an app designed for a specific purpose and a lot simpler and easier to deploy and use by a much wider range of designers and engineers. Now these examples are from Front End Analytics, built on ESA Software's platform. The first is a ball bearing configurator and analysis app. You'll notice the guided workflow that takes you from step one to the next with prompts in each step to enter a numeric value or choose a parameter. One of the characteristics of a good app, I feel, is to make the input fields foolproof by locking it down to a reasonable range. In other words, if the diameter should not be above 2.5, don't make it possible to enter a value greater than that. That type of knowledge has to come from the one building the app, the expert. Putting that kind of burden on the user is risky, to say the least, not to mention how frustrating it would be for the user if the app keeps refusing to consider a number that is entered without proper explanation. Now, once the ball bearing is configured as desired, you arrive at the analysis phase. This is where the cloud's scalable horsepower kicks in, so the number crunching is happening in a remote server elsewhere, not on your local machine. The analysis results can be downloaded as screenshots or as an Excel-style design table. The configuration of the ball bearing you tested and like can also be downloaded as a Gatia assembly file. Now that's a feature that's only theoretical in the sample app that I tried out, but should be easy to implement in real deployment. In another example app, you can do very simple tests to subject a plate to a sudden load and see the results. Now this app too has narrowed the input fields to what the app builder or the expert feels is reasonable choices for materials and parameters. If you enter a value outside that range, the app will prompt you to redo it. And setting up the boundary conditions here is just simple multiple choices. Whereas in a general purpose simulation program, you'll have to specify on a mesh model where the load will fall, identify the direction of the load with arrows, define the fixed points and the rotation points, and do a lot more. Once you submit the design scenario for analysis, the app processes the stress analysis in the cloud and deliver back the results, downloadable in the form of a report. Perhaps another advantage of this approach, in a job listing page, you can see all the reports from the analysis you have run, so you can compare the results to find the design variation that best fits your purpose. Now, the use of apps to make simulation more accessible to a broader user base is quite promising, and some vendors are starting to consider templates and app publishing tools as part of their software. So we'll look at this topic more as we go forward. Until next time, this is Kenneth Wong reporting from what looks like the genesis of a simulation app universe.